All right. So I have myself the C star. So let's uh, review what I just said before. So in a typical scenario, the base is sitting on a tripod, where the base on the bottom, sitting on flat on the ground. So if I were um, want to convert that to to, um, to to do no field rotation on the equator, what I need to do is I need to sit this on a side, something like this, okay? So, actually right here, see the motor that rotates right here. So, as it moves, it just rotates this way. Got it? So in theory, in this type of mode, this arm would not move, it's simply just this, to kind of compensate for the rotation of Earth. So if we anywhere in between, as I kind of demonstrated a little bit before, I say I simply just to find an angle so that it uh, it's from equator to north pole. Equator to north pole. So I'm in, in where I am, it's around 37 degrees, it's around here. So I need to be able to put the mount like this. So how do I do that? <laughs> so it's done by what we call a equatorial wedge. It's simply something that sits on the tripod like this. But you see there's an angle right here. And if I sit on here, you see it forms an angle. See that? So that's the modification I did. So let me kind of explain that. So I kind of mentioned in earlier, very, very beginning, uh, when I just experimented this, this is the uh, this is the adapter I, I made. It's a it's a oak on top and three, four, actually eight layers of plywood, so three strong. And then I I, I varnish it, so it's waterproof, and and it's it's a wedge to kind of fit the adapter here. That's right. Like this. See how the. There's a there's trapezoid shape, and then there's a little um, stop pin so that there's a there's downward force. So even though I may I may slip, but that pin will stop it. That's a safety pin. All right. So I simply attach this to the base of my telescope. It's orienting this way. I'll explain why. I'm turning it now. I mean, it's pretty. It's it's stable. I mean, if you want to be be sure, just there's a little um, uh, a screw nut nut lock to make sure it doesn't rotate and get loose. So I simply attach it to this wedge. See that? But you notice it's not very stable, right? So I should have done it, put it on this side, but realistically, if you really want to do this, you, this tripod is too short. Too short. So it's not very stable this way. So let me turn this around and show you what I have. Pick this up. 
I actually use a, a long tripod. Um, it's dirty. It doesn't have to be very expensive. Uh, C Star is pretty light. The song is the base, the triangle base is wide. And even could be light, you can just attach some some rock bags here to kind of give you some bulk. So I'm gonna put it here. There it is. And you want you see, you want one leg, the leg right here pointing north. There's a reason why. My north is here, by the way. Voila! This is Sea Star in equatorial mode. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I'll explain later on why, how come is people have a lot of trouble thinking it may not work and stuff, but that's the next video. I'll explain how the software works. I didn't change anything in the software. As you can see, I didn't modify any hardware. I simply attached to just, but there's a little things, a few things you need to be aware of. But. I'll do that later and do. I'll talk about that in a separate video. But you see right here, it's leaning this way, so that I have a leg pointing north. Typically in equatorial mode, we do a pole line alignment. What does that mean? Meaning that when I first set this up, this axis or rotation needs to point to Polaris are exactly the axis where it parallel to Earth's rotation. Exactly if I'm here and I want to point that base so that it's point parallel to that axis. And here's my model of my here's the model of my of my uh, of my culture. So you see there's an angle between the level and where I need to point. And that's exactly this angle. Right? And that's what this wedge does. So what I what, if I do that and I set the the base of the rotation matches that of the earth. So that Earth rotates, my base simply just counteract that rotation. So my, I'm always pointing at the star that I want. Simple as that. Uh, if you if you still have fun, have kind of confused, play with it. Get something like this and actually toy around with it. That's how I learn, and uh, I'm a visual kind of person and like to be hands on. So by seeing that and looking around and, and play around with it. That's how I figure it out. Okay? Let me give you an idea of the rigidity of this. To me, it's pretty nice. I mean, I, I, it will not fall. I mean, if we worry about I put some weight in here, then it'll be rock solid. Let me show you how a typical orientation how this would be when you do a pull alignment. Again, pull alignment is making sure this base is exactly, the axis of that base is exactly parallel to Earth rotation. That's all that is, pull alignment exactly, that's exactly what it's doing. That's why you don't really want to use like a, like a, like a ball head or something like that because the wedge is specially designed so that it has these fine, fine, uh, my knobs, counteracting knobs, and a specific locking pin 
to kind of get that perfect. So the key here is that you want to make sure they, they may be off a little bit this way or off this way. That's why these two set of knobs counteract that so that in theory you can be as perfectly aligned to the polar axis as you want. Let me give you a little close up. You see these two counteracting knobs? And this right here is to control the angle. It's right here. Um, I've been doing it for a few times now. I mean, I mean, you're right that it's it's plastic, but I've been talking to a few people actually who broke this apart, and he is very confident that the internal gears and the structure of it is very, very, very good. And he wouldn't hesitate about doing this at all. So, again, do at your own risk. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. So, you can just just use this as a as a reference and just just how it's done. But you don't really have to do it. it it's just for me. Okay. So let me try to give you an idea how it's pulling the line. Okay. So let me now try to set up my polar alignment scope. Again, as we kind of mentioned before, um, we are trying to orient the base of this scope so that the axis would point into Polaris so that it would mimic, it would be parallel to the, the Earth axis. Again, the very visuals are. Here is flat. Just first spin this way. And you see it's pointing here. So right there is the is is Polaris. So I'm trying to make it so that this axis is parallel to this. Alright? I kind of alluded before, or maybe another video. I actually have this um, red dot finder to help me guide the lens when I'm doing landscape photography, or landscape video, or the lunar um, imaging. Um, if you can't find the moon, I can actually use this to kind of um, aim directly to it and just kind of give a. a, a a helping hand with for the sea star. This would also work if you're trying to do solar imaging and if sea star have trouble doing uh, finding sun. And of course, you're not going to look through this, but uh, if the sun sun ray is directly in in the in the right uh, direction, the shadow or the the shadow formed by this onto the the ground would be um, would be will be a very narrow uh, ellipse or circle depends on where you're shining to. Um, for those who don't know how this works, um, red dot finder, you would see You see a red dot right in the middle. I'm not sure you can see it from here, but I guarantee it's right in the middle. Okay. So, but if I'm trying to do this for for equatorial mount, I'm not trying to have this pointing at Polaris because the base is here. I want this to po to point. So I actually have another adapter just glued here, just use super glue. And this is what the adapter looks like. So I'm just gonna simply switch it. So now, I'm 
Let me bring this further up so you can get an idea. So now, in theory, if there's, it's, it's a night, if the angle is set correctly, this will be pointing at Polaris. And I can use these knobs to adjust, rotate this way, or this to rotate up and down. That's why you don't want to use a ball head um, uh, <clears throat> For, for this, you really want to use a wedge. It's because it limits your 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 freedom so that it's just perfectly uh, ideal for a polar alignment. So you would see it's oriented this way, so the so the scope will be my my base will rotate this way relative to the ground, and my arm will swing back and forth. See that? Let me try to give you an example. First, rotating the base. Okay, first I'm going to rotate the base. Okay. So, you see how it rotates? So in a typical or equatorial mount, this rotation will mimic and counteract Earth rotation. And the angle again is really dependent on where you where you are putting your sea star relative to the for the pole or the um, or uh, or equator. Okay. Now I'm going to aim the arm. So hope you get the idea. So this is how you would aim your mount to the area of sky that you want to image. And as long as this rotates and to compensate Earth rotation, you will have pointing your scope to a to a star and will not rotate with hyperfuel rotation. Now there is a caveat to this and this is really limited by software and if, if ZW actually we want this to 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 be fully functional they need to change the limit because um, what happened is <coughs> is uh, they, the normal mode so that if it's this way 
right? If you try to move the the head of the if you're trying to move this below what you think is horizon, for example, it's going that way, it would say, I, I can't go below horizon. What, what are you trying to do? So it would stop. But you know, but in this orientation, it's perfectly normal for it to go beyond, beyond this, beyond this, right? It can actually go beyond, go all the way this way. So you should go able to go this way. So instead of instead of it going this way, now it's going to go this way because of this angle. And if it uh, because you know this can retract all the way down, so it can always go all the way down. It's just a software limitation. So that is really the that's really the only. One, one of the main things that I see is just software limitation that it shouldn't really be there. So typically with other manufacturers, they would have like a like an equatorial mode versus a alt uh, AZ mode. And that would kind of change some of the configurations because of that. But naturally, but normally, that's all that is. And I can image this all night. Um, you notice this is really tucked in. I mean, it does, there's no long arm of momentum here. So no angular momentum or, or, or angular, the, the inertia, moment inertia is really short. So there's not much weight, not much stress on this side. Now I do see it is because it's an angle. So there is some stress here. Because it, it was designed to be just sitting around top. So the gear, the way it moves, I mean, it could be a little bit, but you know, it's actually pretty sturdy. And for me, I'm, I'm willing to take my risk. Okay. So that's pretty much it. So here's a, an actual equatorial mount that I have among many others, I guess. So you can see, it's really the same idea. Here's my tripod. Here's my, this is actual the, how a sea star would have been, and here's the base. This is actually the base, this is the RA axis. And right here, is the declination axis. This is where a normal telescope would sit. But because seats are so small, it's, it's, you can all visualize how this works. When you do pole alignment, this, this right here, got to point straight to Polaris. See, there's actually a, a, a polar alignment scope people use to do that. So this is the axis. Sorry. So this is the axis to pointing to Polaris. And you see how it's angled, right? That's all that is. So that wedge essentially serves as this wedge. Point for this a lot bigger. And yeah. Alright? So Every tele, uh, equatorial mount is um, is uh, designed this way. Some is, uh, cheaper than the others, but okay. But that's that's the basic idea. And people worry about you know the stress on the on the mount stuff because the mental picture is a scope this big. This thing is almost like four three feet long here. It's damn heavy. But C star is like just a couple of pounds. It's nothing. All right. So that's why you you don't need to buy equatorial mount for a C star. I mean, that's designed for things like this. So again, as a comparison, this is what you would look it would look like for a C star.
RA axis here, declination axis here, and the telescope, that gigantic 20 pound, three or four feet long telescope became this. And if I had a finder scope here, that become my polar scope. And I'll definitely go ahead and 3D print another adapter and just put it here. And that that would do it. I simply just to, if I'm doing equatorial mode, I'll just simply move that here and do my pull alignment. And um, I'll maybe I'll just get another one. It's pretty cheap. <clears throat> okay, so um, hope this helps. This is it. Um, so next next video, I'll talk more about the software and how how I made it to work. But realistically, there's nothing I did. But just figure out how to take advantage of what software stuff you already provide. And that will essentially turn this into equatorial mode mount. And we'll, if you do the right full alignment, we'll totally eliminate, um, eliminate the, uh, the rotation. And the other benefit, as you may know, is that by doing that, you can have, in theory, as long as exposure as you want. As long as it's polar aligned and you don't you don't uh, you don't saturate the, the, the signal in the, the sensor. So before right now, GWO will give you 10 to 30 seconds. So in theory, this can work for like up to five minutes to be polar aligned. All right, um, that's it for now. I um, so see you later and have fun with C Star. <laughs>